But sorry to backtrack a bit, but fundamentally, you know, um, uh, you have a, you know, you have a, there is that checkability. Or whether it's a mathematician publishing his latest theorem, um, that will be checked by the community. A written account is provided which is open to scrutiny of correctness of reasoning. Openness. Interestingly, the terms justification and justice have the same root. Justification is the act, action of justifying and the administration of justice, and, and justice is the quality of being fair and just, the exercise of authority and the vindication of right. True justice depends on an open justification of decisions, which is the basis of both mathematics and democracy. And of course, justification is one of the key elements of mathematics through proof. Mathematics, like democracy, is fair because of openness and the potential equal treatment of all with regard to warranting their decisions. How, no matter how high or how low you are, if you can offer a valid proof or counterexample, it should stand on its own merits. I know the real world isn't always that simple, and if you're some kind of cranky guy who's been trying to prove perpetual motion, and then you send a new proof of an open conjecture to a journal, they may not look at it quite as seriously as if it comes from Michael Latia, but ultimately I believe that a valid proof will be accepted. And so we have these values of openness, fairness, and democracy. Mathematics embodies justice and fairness, um, and it's long been associated with them. Again, in Mesopotamia, the reliability of calculation, measurement, and numerical records were actually understood as part of the idea of justice because of that openness, because people could see that, that trades or taxes were being done fairly. In Greece, ancient Greece, mathematical proof emerged from philosophical argument and reasoning that developed with democracy, with its justification of human rights. And, um, one can't quite say that mathematical proof was a byproduct of that, but it certainly grew out of those same currents. It's, it's recently been argued that the probabilistic concepts and methods based on are, and, and methods are based on an idea of fairness, with implications for both historic and current practices of market trading. I found some interesting papers by Tim Johnson, on, which I'd never heard of until I happened to do some web searches and doing some interesting work about. Um, the, the role of um, fairness in the history of, of probability and implications for modern day market or market trade. <coughs> Justice represents fairness, and you see that ancient sign, the, the scales, which of course is one of the, the, the metaphors we use in teaching in algebra, the equality, because that notion of balance, uh, fairness, equality, it's a nice symbol. Of it. And I want to also argue, maybe this is a more controversial argument, that, uh, about the basis of mathematics, mathematics being based on conversation. Conversation is proposed, has been proposed by me, as an underlying epistemological unit in the social constructivist philosophy of mathematics. Conversation which is symbolically mediated exchanges between persons underpins mathematics, as claim. And I won't go into it too much, but a, a, a few aspects of it. That first of all, mathematics is primar primarily a linguistic symbolic activity, using written inscription and language, which means that it's addressing a reader. It's always addressing a reader. Language addresses a reader, as Voloshinov said. Any bit of writing is written for a reader, which could include you, you can read your own writing. So mathematical knowledge representations are conversation. They're, part, they're something offered to a reader, from the writer to the speaker to the listener. Second element of conversation, a substantial class of mathematical concepts have a conversational back and forth, you and me element in them. The epsilon delta definitions of limit in analysis, the um, hypothesis testing and statistics, and uh, I can give um, half a dozen different further examples at least, including the probability, uh, etc. So we do have that back and forth built into some, that, that conversational underpinning built into some mathematical concepts. Proof, both in its ancient forms and in certain modern systems, is based, well, it's always based on the persuasion of others, but sometimes it's more overtly so. Um, proof is, con is conceptual. It's about an argument to persuade someone else. And of course, an ideal proof looks monological because you try to anticipate all the critical responses in a, from a dialogical perspective. 
Nevertheless, you're offering it out there. It's, a, it's an utterance offered to other people. And finally, my claim is that the acceptance of mathematical knowledge follows a dialectical pattern, you, you know, drawing on and instead of Lakatos. So those are different ways in which conversation as an epistemological unit enters into ma mathematics and the warranting of mathematical knowledge. Here's some mathematicians, John Kemeny, um, discussing, converse. It was the cover of Life magazine once. And conversation is ethically based. Conversation as an interpersonal activity is inescapably ethical. Engaging with a speaker or a listener as another human being, you are engaging with a speaker or a listener as another human being with mutual respect and trust. Well, you know, to a greater or lesser extent, that's not exactly. Um, you are in conversation, you are attending to another's proposals and responding with relevance. You have a duty to do that. And uh, awareness of others' reactions to one's proposals is something else that you, have, you need to attend to. So however much it subjectifies and depersonalizes, mathematics remains at its heart communication or conversation is my thing. So uh, there are, there is, a co I've been trying to point out the covert ethics of mathematics. All conversation is ethical because it necess necessitates respect for the other, cooperation, connectedness, and care. This is where I bring in some of those other aspects of Gilligan's values, the uh, connectedness so. In addition, open, the openness of mathematics brings in fairness, democracy, and justice. These are all aspects of the good. So covertly, my claim is, mathematics is deeply imbued with ethics, part of the human striving for the good. So, in my brief trot through my claims, um, which I hope are controversial, um, I've been talking about the values of mathematics. First of all, the overt values, and some of those are truth or certainty, which are epistemological, reason, which is epistemological, beauty and aesthetics, which is of course aesthetic, objectivism, which is epistemological and ontological, universalism, epistemological and ontological. The covert values I attempted to uncover uh, included objectism, which is ontological, how things are, how we perceive them, um, separated ethical values, which is ethics, um, further ethics from fair, open, democratic and good, those are the covert values, and then, and I hope there are more, um, if I had time I might have looked at progressivism, one of all progress, as one of Alan's categories that would be interesting to unpick and, and examine. And the ones I didn't look at were the outer values, not discussed here, which might include mystery, one of the <coughs> categories, and other things like elitism, accessibility, utility, numeracy, criticality, Eurocentrism. That's just speculation. I'm just, you know, uh, if I'm here at next Easter, maybe I'll look into some of those. But maybe you'll have had enough. And that's it. Thank you.